today's demonstration is going to feature campaign automation, uh, another area that we just continually invest in. And, and we'll tell you a little bit more about campaign automation later on. But I just want you to know, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's incredibly powerful and flexible. It's a workflow builder, so you can automate different flows of marketing activities in a, in a single, uh, on, a, on a canvas visually here and configure all the options. And we continue to make it not only uh, more flexible with additional options like those I'm gonna show you, but we also have an eye on usability. I wanna make it really easy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share some additional resources after the demo on how easy it is to get acquainted with campaign automation if you might be a new user to it. So first of all, I wanna highlight something that we recently added that we call marketing goals. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna use a very simple uh, workflow that we set up in advance for you. This is a campaign automation that is used for sending emails for our latest net promoter score survey. And what I've done is built in some logic such that if a recipient of this email doesn't click on the link to access the survey um, and they take the negative path, they'll get a follow-up email after 48 hours that reminds them to do so. And the upper path in green is for the participants who did click on the link. Next, there's a node that will recognize in the event that the survey was submitted. Again, if there is a negative path and we didn't, we had someone who clicked an email link but didn't actually end up submitting the survey, we're going to send them a third email as a final attempt for a reminder. And for those who submitted the survey, we will thank them with an email. So now let's take a look at the new enhancement that we call marketing goals. So I'm going to click on the goal button and I see a little dialogue that opens that allowed us to name our goal. In this case, we just put a very explicit description of the actual goal itself. 100 participants submitted my NPS survey. Next, we can select a goal type. There are a number of different options here that are built in for you. A user can choose to wrap a marketing goal around the number or percentage of participants who submitted a particular form, a subscription, a survey, as, is, as in this example, had a specific type of interaction with an email, were added to a list, and so on, all the way down to events. As mentioned, this example is for submitted survey, but they all work basically the same way. Once we choose submitted survey, the fields below tailor to that particular use case. So in this case, I can next provide a reference to the specific survey that we're measuring. Next, I have the option to enter a number or a percentage of the number or percent of participants in this particular automation that I wanna consider as my target goal. And finally, I have a time range for this uh, goal to be attained. And I can further specify that if a particular participant achieves the goal, they can either continue in the automation as before, or based on the fact that they did achieve the goal, we can have any participants after that point exit the automation. Once I have specified, built out my automation, associated a goal to it optionally, as just shown, and then published this particular automation at any time that I wish, I now can come into the statistics tab and I can get a visual indication at a glance of how that goal is tracking. Obviously that we used a very, very simple uh, example with a tiny sample size, but you get the idea, the visuals would be the same. So I see in this case that in the time uh, of the uh, tracking for this particular goal, it was not reached. Um, we had a goal of 100 participants submitting a survey, but we only ended up sending it actually out to three participants in our silly little example. But you see the example uh, here that this is the content that you would see. You would see an easy representation of the number of the total uh, goal who achieved it. You would see also how that achievement was, was reached over time. 
And if I click on the Participants tab, for each participant shown as usual, we have added a goal column. And so you can see here very easily at a glance which specific participants achieved the goal and did not. Next, I'm going to show you uh, three other different enhancements, again, in campaign automation. So uh, I'm, I've got a canvas here that just has some various, some various bits and parts, and I'll just bounce through these and explain some easy capabilities for you. First of all, we have gone into a number of our different triggers that are available, and we've added an additional option to be able to uh, deduplicate on email address. So let me show you what that would look like. I'm going to click on this registered for event trigger. Now, we previously had provided the ability to trigger a campaign automation only once based on each unique participant in the automation. The new enhancement is now we've added a second option here to trigger an automation only once based on unique email address. And this could be useful if you have in certain uh, situations, you're finding that multiple participants actually share a common email address. So now we've added this level of control. And this is supported in a wide variety of, uh, of different types of triggers. So I would see it here in register an event, or in any of the other types of triggers that are individual based, I now have that new option. It's very, very simple, but very valuable for that particular use case. Next, I'm gonna show you how you can use accounts, the account entity in Dynamics with campaign automation. So I will go to this field updated trigger and uh, Again, we've had an existing ability to select a participant type. This used to only list lead or contact as options. You now have a third option, which is account. So if you, if, if in your organization, it makes sense that you're doing business, uh, what you want to be able to execute a marketing campaign and automate those steps in a workflow at the account level, you can do so. You simply go to each appropriate trigger or action that currently can use uh, be at the leader contact level. And for all of this, all of those triggers and actions in a particular workflow, you now simply would choose account as the participant type. Now, in this case, because it's a field updated trigger, I have the further option of choosing which field in the account entity I want to trigger on. And just like I would see before, if the, if the participant type was lead, I would see lead fields. If the participant type is a contact, I see contact fields. In the exact same way now with this new enhancement, if I choose account as participant type, I see a listing of all the available account names. And in this case, or excuse me, account fields. And in this case, we've chosen account name. So if a name field changes on a particular account, it will trigger the particular automation. Very simple. Next, I'm going to show how you can use the email interaction enhancement that was added in a release, recent release as well. An email interaction trigger will initiate some type of action if a user does or does not interact with an email. What we've done is made it more sophisticated so down the negative path, if an, if an email was not interacted with by a participant, we can now get very particular into the specific uh, email status of deliverability. So for example, we can acknowledge that a user did not respond to an email that was delivered we can now go down and take a different path in our automation if an email hard bounced, i.e. had an invalid email address. If it soft bounced, which is a condition where an email provider returned a, an email uh, to an email address that isn't getting through. Or 
in a situation where the recipient has marked your email content as spam. So I can, I can denote each of these as a different path, such as I can communicate, uh, some, send a follow-up email if someone didn't respond to a first one, if it's, if it's bounced, I can have them add to a marketing list for follow-up, or if it's marked as spam, I may wish to send a specific email to someone internally. And those are the campaign automation enhancements I wanted to show.